Hello everyone, welcome to the Redman TV. It's time for some of your daily Liverpool related news. A few things that I want to get through today. Firstly, and most importantly, the news that broke yesterday evening or yesterday afternoon that uh, the centenary stand at Anfield is to be renamed the Kenny Dalglish stand. Um, yeah, man, absolutely, absolutely amazing. I put it on, on Twitter and we did a little, I did a little Instagram post on it at the time. Um, what an incredible tribute to the man. Now, I'm sure, you know, I, I'd have gone as far as naming the whole frigging stadium after, you know, obviously if we've moved from Anfield, more likely because Anfield is what Anfield is, of course. Um, and I'm not sure Kenny himself would be totally comfortable with any of this stuff because, you know, it's just not in his personality. He is, you know, from what from just look at him, the way he talks, the way he conducts himself. He's a very humble man. And I think he'd probably be embarrassed by the whole thing. But sometimes you have to take these things out of people's hands. And for a man of that, of that size and that importance... He's literally the living embodiment of Liverpool Football Club. And I, you look back through the history of the people who were most important in making Liverpool what it was, and you all, all the way back to like John Holding or whatever. I don't see everyone goes on about Shankly and Paisley, but Kenny Dalglish is he's just, for a man as well, and another guy, much like all these other guys, not from Liverpool, but completely and utterly, you know, fell in love with the city, fell in love with the football club. And it's just the way that he's always conducted himself. And listen, you know, a few things got steered in the wrong direction in his, his second spell in charge at the football club. But, you know, that man, nobody gets the Liverpool way. And, you know, it's such an abstract concept, but a concept, but nobody gets it better than Kenny Dalglish. Again, it's about humility and, and, and bravery and honesty and, um, and, and, and doing the right thing. And, uh, you know, I, I always was told stories about him as a player. Um, by my dad, and I was there the last time he, the last time he took to the field as a Liverpool player. I was lucky enough, to, lucky enough to be just about old enough for that. You know, when we won our last last league title. But the stories that my dad tells me about Kenny Dalglish that make this the most important thing because look, Liverpool have had great players and they've had great managers. But for me, it was the stuff uh, around Hillsborough and the way he conducted himself and the way you know he attended. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I think he attended pretty much every funeral. You know, he was there and he was he was he was like a became like a grief counselor for the city, which is which is crazy when you think about it. You know, there's so many people. My like my dad's a social worker and he was around at that at that time. You know, and you're seeing it. You know, the the way that you know everyone took it to heart, but Kenny Dalglish, and you can see how it affected him after off the back uh, off the back of that. But yeah, you know, the man carried the burden of it and and the heartbreak of a, of an entire of an entire city almost, you know, on on his own shoulders at times. And yeah, well, look, what an incredible man and what for me, what an incredible tribute to him. In in a world where the corporatisation of football just runs riot, to be able to turn around and say, actually, you know what, see this see this stand here. You know, we, you know, we'll we'll forego naming rights and we'll forgo all the bits and pieces of the entrapments that we could do to earn a few extra bob and go you know what no you know liverpool celebrates its heroes and we've got the the paisley gates and the shankly gates and the, the shankly statue and yeah for me the kenny dagley stand um is absolutely perfect but let us know your thoughts let us know your thoughts on that in, in the comments below of course um but yeah I'm, I'm i'm over the moon for him and i'm over the moon for the for the football club for making ultimately what's the right decision on that um next up we've got a little bit of Pre-season friendly news, so Liverpool are going to be taking part in the Audi Cup, which might not be news to you, but it was definitely news to me. I knew we were playing in Germany, I knew there was a training camp being set up when we returned from our um, Far East tour, or mini tour. Um, so the Audi Cup, we're going to be facing off against, I would guess, one or two from Bayern Munich, Atletico Madrid and AC Milan. Boss, uh, I was a little concerned. I said, no, 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 actually, let me rephrase. I wasn't concerned as such, but when they was talking about this tra training camp, I was wondering how intense it was going to be. We had a very, very intense pre-season last year. You know, it started early, and we and we, we just played game after game after game. And obviously, then we went over to the States as well, which I, you know, I had a great time. But I've, it, it's great to see that all of the, they fulfilled some commitments by going to the Far East and not going full-blown on that. But what I like for both, what I like about this and of course, it's only it's only preseason, it's only friendlies. But if Liverpool Liverpool are going to be playing European football again next season, and fingers crossed, Liverpool are going to be playing Champions League football. What a, what an, an, a good test! Not a true test of your opposition, but a good way to just get the players into the, into the idea of playing against these teams again. Get them because even though they're not going to be full blooded encounters, there's something to for a start playing in Europe. Rather than you know testing yourself against these teams on in a completely different climate and what have you, but playing against these teams just get the idea of I'm taking to the pitch against 
Bayern Munich. So that if Liverpool come up against Bayern Munich, it's not like, oh my God, it's Bayern Munich. It's like, oh no, it's Bayern Munich. We played these in the summer. Beat them 5 0 or whatever. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think really good, really good for Liverpool. You know, we don't have the greatest of luck in these tournaments, to be perfectly honest, but that was then. This is now. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm dead excited. I mean, just to know if anyone's planned on going over to Germany for these. Fingers crossed again. Hopefully, we'll be able to go over. I, I'd be buzzing for that. I really want to see these matches so much. Um, last piece of news then, transfer related. This is Anfield. Uh, did a few articles on this over the last couple of days. I'm not so sure it's, it's really. It's, 100% genuinely a Liverpool story, if I'm honest. But Ryan Bertrand is being linked with a move to Liverpool in the summer. Now, we know it's like two or three years ago, I think it was three, we were first linked with him when he was still at Chelsea. Uh, and we were after him on loan. But apparently, because of how poorly we treated Victor Moses, um, Chelsea weren't going to allow him to come on loan to us, which, fine, we should never be loaning players off Chelsea anyway, to be honest. But the... He's gone on, and he, look, he's been very, very good for Southampton, hasn't he? And whilst people will inevitably see another transfer story with us being linked with another Southampton player and probably roll their eyes and just, you know, caps lock engage and all that stuff, um, I think he's a good player, and I think Liverpool could do a lot worse than target him. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that he's, like, he's massive. He's not world-class, is he? He's not up there with the top left-backs in world football, but he's a good quality Premier League left-back. He could play at a higher level and by all accounts as well, Chelsea is sniffing round and that's... It's kind of good enough for me because I think they I think they will be looking certainly to, to bolster their wing-back positions and I think he'd be... I personally think he'd be a very good option for us if he didn't pay too much money but all that being said, the, the story seems to be Ryan Bertrand's told people that he wants to leave Southampton in the summer and Chelsea are apparently interested. And I don't, I don't know then if Liverpool's name is just being thrown into the hat on this because of previous links or whatever. But one way or the other, let me know whether you'd be interested in signing Ryan Bertrand. In fact, let's put a poll in the corner of the screen there. Sorry, Shy. Um, should we sign Ryan Bertrand? Just click the I. Oh, it's there. It's there. It's there. Click the eye in the corner of the screen and vote Ryan Bertrand yes or no. And then obviously expand your thoughts in the comments below as well. Anyway, that'll do us for your daily news. Subscribe to my channel, Mates TV. I'm on the road to 10,000 subscribers. And in fact, Retro Football TV, we're like 40 away from 10K on that. Click there, go and subscribe to it. Watch some amazing football gaming content. And if you want an example of what that looks like, there's me and Chris playing the Wheel of Wank, the Wheel of Wank football games. Get on it.